Today we are going to have a quick look at the latest bone conduction headphones from Noenka. So if you are wondering what the runner Neo can bring to the table for about $100, then stick with me after the intro. So the Runner Neo is the latest generation of bone conduction headphones from Noenka. And while I got this free sample from the manufacturer for testing, I'm not getting paid for making this review and no one got preview privileges either, so I'm completely free to share my honest and unfiltered thoughts with you. Now, onto the design of the Runner Neo, we got this usual bone conduction form factor. The frame is made from a flexible but durable titanium alloy and we got a soft silicone coating all over the headset including the neckband, the head units and the speakers. The fit was very tight at first and after like 5 minutes I thought I was going to have comfort issues due to that tightness, but after wearing the Runner Neo for at least 5 or 6 hours straight I had to realize that my first impression couldn't be more wrong. The headphones turned out to be really comfortable in the long run and thanks to their relatively compact design I did not experience any fitting issues with my bike helmet or my sunglasses either. They also sit very securely on my ears whether I'm inside sitting in my chair or I'm out there cycling in this miserable weather. And speaking of weather, the Runner Neo is IP66 rated, which, barring complete submersion, is the highest level of protection you can get against dust and water ingress. And given the sturdy build quality, I can see these headphones lasting a long time, even if you use them for your sweaty workouts all the time. The Runner Neo weighs in at 35 grams, which might be a touch above average, but still long-term comfort is first class. You can always use the elastic band that comes in the box if you feel like the fit is not tight enough around the back of your neck, but I never even touched it. And what I also didn't touch are the pair of earplugs and these sound enhancers in the box, which in my opinion will only defeat the purpose of using open ear bone conduction headphones, so I never used those either. But again, it's all there if you want them. I only wish the manufacturer had given us a carry pouch instead, but there is no such thing to be found in the box. However, you can get a hard case for 15 bucks from the Nyanka online store if you want to protect the headphones and not just toss them into your messy gym bag all the time, exposing them to all sorts of potential damage. So no carry case by default, but there is a proprietary charging cable that comes with the Runner Neo or charging base, as Nyanka likes to call it. Using that special USB-A cable, you can charge your headphones wirelessly. Which honestly doesn't make much sense to me, especially when we consider the fact that the headphones can only be charged with their own cable, as Nyanka's solution is not compatible with any standard Qi wireless chargers. So at the end of the day, you will still have to take yet another cable with you if you want to keep your headphones charged when traveling. And while that's not ideal, all bone conduction headphones I've ever tested use some proprietary charging cable, so there is no real news here. The only advantage we get from using this wireless charging base is mainly visual, as there are no pins or charging ports on the headphones, which can actually contribute to their longevity as well, because there is less chance for corrosion, oxidation or any sort of water damage. So there is some real benefit of using wireless charging after all. And to stay on that positive note, the 10 hours of single charge playtime is much better than the category average, which is about 8 hours. Next up is connectivity. The wireless chip on board supports Bluetooth version 5.2 and it's compatible with the SBC, the AAC, the Aptex and the Aptex HD audio codecs. Pairing is quick and easy with both iOS and Android devices and while I got no lip sync issues when watching videos, the more than 200 milliseconds of lag might be out of the comfort zone of hardcore gamers. But if you'd rather use the Runner Neo in an office, I've got great news for you as the headphones come with support for multipoint use, which works across all platforms. The headset can connect to two devices simultaneously, whether you use any combination of Android, iOS, Mac or Windows. When a phone call comes in, the audio switches back to your phone automatically, so in that case multipoint works well. But when you switch between two devices when listening to music or a podcast, it can take up to like 10 seconds for the audio to switch over. And it feels like forever, but at the end of the day we got a working multipoint and that's what really matters. And in case you were wondering what kind of a phone call quality you can expect from these headphones, 
here's a quick audio sample for you from the built-in microphones. So this is the audio quality you get from the Nyanka Runner Neo in a quiet environment. But this was the easy part, so here's another audio sample for you. This time I'm outside, standing on the side of a fairly busy road with some traffic, as you can probably hear and see. And there is also some slight wind going on, as always, on the left coast of Ireland. So let me know what you think of the microphone quality of the 9 part runner Neo Hackroy in the comments down below. As far as controls, you can find three plastic buttons on the right hand side. There is a play pause button on the speaker unit up front, which can also be used to activate your voice assistant, and there are two volume buttons on the main unit behind your ear. The volume up button can also skip a track forward with a one second long press, while the volume down button will skip a track backward. But the volume up button is also the on off switch, and that can cause some mishaps. What I mean by that is when you want to turn off the headphones with a 5 second long press, it will always skip a track forward first, and only then will it turn off the headphones. With music it's not a problem, but when you listen to a podcast or watching a TV show, it will always skip to the next episode before the headphones actually turn off. And that can be really frustrating. And since we got no smartphone app, there is zero chance of changing the functionality of the controls or getting the issues fixed through a firmware upgrade. But other than these annoyances and limitations, the physical buttons themselves work well. They are easy to locate and the reaction times are quick. And to be completely honest, if I hadn't read about this skipping to the next episode no matter what issue, I would have probably not even noticed it myself, so maybe depending on your use case, the controls will get the job done just fine. As for the sound quality, the first thing I noticed was how loud the Runner Neo can get compared to something like the Shox Open Run Pro. And also how much brighter, more dynamic and detailed the Nyankas are across the mids and especially the treble. We got better extension and more micro detail in the higher octaves, and the soundstage feels wide and spacious too. But when it comes to nuances such as how warm, rich or natural the acoustic bass or female vocals sound, the Open Run Pro takes an easy win. The bass impact of the Nyanka is ok, and maybe you can even say it's actually great by bone conduction standards, but there are nasty vibrations and also some distortion present already at moderate volume levels and that can easily put me off when listening to music. And the vibrations are actually the worst when you turn on the headphones and the female voice says, Welcome to Anchor One Connection. Headphones, uh, Bluetooth is connected. I don't know what's going on with that girl's voice, but it just vibrates my head and my ears like crazy every single time I turn on the Runner Neo. And even though I like having goosebumps, it's not the best way of getting them in my opinion. And due to the lack of an app, these voice prompts cannot be turned off. But again, there is a good bass impact and if you are not bothered by vibrations as much as I am, you will enjoy this sound signature a lot. The shocks might deliver less of a punch, but the bass we get there is also much more clean and tight with less of these funky vibrations. And while the Nyanka can serve up more musical detail and can create a wider image, the Open Run Pro is more tonally correct, and in terms of imaging, it's more focused with a rather believable and coherent soundstage. I know that the Shox Open Run Pro is much more expensive, but it has long been considered to be some sort of a reference everything has to be compared to in the bone conduction business. So what else you get from Shox for almost twice the price? Well, a nice hard carry case for starters and app support through which you can get software upgrades and new features down the road. Their battery life is about the same and so is their overall build quality, comfort and fit. Where the Runner Neo delivers more is the higher IP rating and the higher maximum volume, which can come in handy in noisy environments. Sure, more volume means more sound leakage as well, but in noisy environments that's barely an issue. In an office, however, you might want to keep the volume down if you don't want others to hear what you listen to during working hours. With all that said, the Nyanka Runner Neo offers a better value overall thanks to its significantly lower price point. 
And just to give you a more closely matched comparison, there is the Halo Perfree BC01 with its $120 price tag and its IP67 waterproof rating. Now, the Halo headphones sound much less powerful across the whole range, but especially in the lower octaves, there is less of a kick. But the sound we get is just as much detailed and bright up top, and we will not have to put up with heavy vibrations from the Perfree headphones either. Sure, there is no app support and the battery life is only about 8 hours, and on top of that you will still have to cough up 10 or 20 bucks more to get the Halos, so the Nyanka headphones remain to be the better value proposition here. Or at least they are at the time of making this video. For actual prices you can check out the links in the description. And to wrap things up, I would say that if you don't want to spend much more than 100 euros or dollars on a pair of bone conduction sports headphones, then by all means the Nyanka Runner Neo should be at or around the top of your shopping list. These headphones are very well built and you can use them both safely and comfortably during your workouts and outdoor activities. Their sound is powerful and so is their battery, which can last a full week of training on a single charge. Well, that depends on your training routine, of course. As always, if you want to spend more, you have plenty other options out there, but Nyanka is kind of in a sweet spot as far as value per dollar, in my opinion. And that was my take on the Runner Neo Bone Conduction headphones. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and if you have anything to add or ask, feel free to comment away. Thanks for watching everyone, see you all in the next one.